In the course of preparing a compounded pharmaceutical preparation for an individual patient, the active ingredient that the pharmacist ultimately uses can oftentimes be obtained from several sources. Most frequently, however, the source of active ingredient will be either the pure drug in bulk USP powder form or a commercially prepared solid dosage form, such as a tablet or capsule that contains a specified amount of the active ingredient that is desired. When using pure drug in its bulk USP powder form, obtaining the amount of active ingredient required to prepare the compound is typically a simple matter of weighing the required amount on either a torsion or digital balance. However, obtaining the required amount of active ingredient needed when your source of active ingredient is a commercially prepared tablet or capsule can be a slightly more complex problem. This tutorial is designed to aid you in understanding the calculations and procedures employed in obtaining a specified amount of active ingredient from a commercially prepared solid dosage form in the absence of bulk USP powder. To illustrate this concept, we will employ the following sample prescription as an example. This prescription asks the pharmacist to compound 120 milliliters of a suspension of allopurinol concentrated at 180 milligrams per 5 milliliters. Step 1 involves calculations to determine the amount of active ingredient, allopurinol in this case, that is needed to compound the prescription. This is easily accomplished by setting up a simple proportion as shown here, which multiplies the desired concentration by the desired total volume. Doing this, we see that the amount of allopurinol needed to compound this preparation is 4.32 grams. The next question that must be asked is, what is our source of active ingredient? In this case, allopurinol, a medication used to control the symptoms associated with chronic gout, is available from several compounding supply companies as a USP bulk powder and also as a commercially prepared tablet in 100 and 300 milligram strengths. In this example, we will use the 300 milligram allopurinol tablets as our source of active ingredient. Before proceeding, it is important to realize that commercially prepared tablets and capsules are rarely comprised of the active ingredient alone. More often than not, the commercially available tablet or capsule contains active ingredient along with excipients. These excipients are inert materials such as fillers, binders, and dyes that are combined with the active ingredient in order to formulate the active ingredient into a tablet or capsule form. Therefore, if you were to weigh a commercially available tablet or the contents of a commercially available capsule, in most cases the weight that you would obtain would be the sum of the weight of the active ingredient plus the weight of the excipients. Once you have identified the source of active ingredient that you will be using, the next step is to determine the amount of active ingredient that is contained in two tablets or the contents of two capsules, depending on the source you are using. This is obtained directly from the product labeling. In this example, two 300 milligram allopurinol tablets obviously contain 600 milligrams of the active ingredient allopurinol. The next step is to determine the total weight of two of the dosage forms that you are using as your source of active ingredient. This is obtained by weighing either two tablets or the contents of two capsules directly, either on a digital or torsion balance. In other words, if you are using commercially prepared tablets as your source of active ingredient, then weigh two tablets and record that weight. Alternatively, if you are using commercially prepared capsules as your source of active ingredient, 
then weigh the contents of two capsules and record that weight. As a side note, understand that if you are using commercially prepared capsules as your source of active ingredient, you are interested in obtaining the weight of the contents of the two capsules, not the combined weight of the content and capsule shells. Inadvertently weighing the contents and the capsule shell will incorporate error into your calculations as well as your final product. In this example, we determine that the weight of two of the 300 milligram allopurinol tablets that we are using is 0 0.958 grams or 958 milligrams. Now that we know the amount of active ingredient we need to prepare the compound, the amount of active ingredient in two tablets, and the total weight of two tablets, we can use the following formula to calculate the amount of crushed tablet powder that will provide the amount of active ingredient needed. Crushed tablet powder is simply the refined powder that results when commercially prepared tablets are forcefully triturated in a mortar. Remember that this powder is a combination of active ingredient and excipient. The goal here is to determine just how much of that powder contains the precise amount of active ingredient that we need. In our example, we determined that the weight of active ingredient in two of our source tablets was 600 milligrams. Likewise, we determined that the total weight of two of our source tablets was 0 0.958 grams. And finally, we also determined that the amount of active ingredient needed for our compound was 4.32 grams. Inserting these numbers into the formula and solving for x shows us that 6.898 grams of crushed tablet powder derived from the commercially prepared 300 milligram allopurinol tablets will provide the 4.32 grams of pure allopurinol needed to compound the prescription. At this junction, we now know how much crushed tablet powder we need. The next question is, how many tablets do we have to triturate or crush up in order to obtain that amount of crushed tablet powder? To determine the minimum number of tablets that you will need to crush, you can simply divide the amount of active ingredient that you need by the amount of active ingredient in each tablet. In our example, you see that the amount of active ingredient needed is 4.32 grams. And the amount of active ingredient in each of our source tablets is 0 0.3 grams or 300 milligrams. By dividing 4.32 grams by 0 0.3 grams per tablet, you determine that you will need to crush at least 15 tablets in order to obtain 6.898 grams of crushed tablet powder. At this point, we take at least 15 tablets and triturate them to a fine crushed tablet powder in a mortar as shown in this sequence of images. Next, we simply weigh the 6.898 grams of crushed tablet powder as illustrated here. Finally, what we have is 6.898 grams of crushed tablet powder containing 4.32 grams of allopurinol that will now be used to compound the prescription. 
In order to illustrate this same procedure using a commercially prepared capsule as the source of active ingredient, we will use the following sample prescription. This prescription asks the pharmacist to compound 15 capsules containing quinine sulfate at 10 milligram per kilogram of the patient's body weight per capsule. Step 1 involves calculations to determine the amount of active ingredient required. First, we must express the patient's weight in kilograms by taking the patient's weight in pounds, which is provided on the prescription, and dividing by the factor of 2.2 pounds per kilogram. Doing so, we determine the patient's weight to be 21 kilograms. Next, multiplying the patient's weight by the prescribed dosage of 10 milligrams per kilogram, we determine that each capsule needs to contain 210 milligrams of quinine sulfate. Finally, multiplying the amount of quinine sulfate per capsule, 210 milligrams, by the number of capsules that you are asked to prepare, 15 in this example, we determine that 3.15 grams or 3,150 milligrams of quinine sulfate is needed to prepare the prescription. Next, we must identify the source of quinine sulfate that will be used in preparing the prescription. In this example, the source of quinine sulfate will come from commercially prepared 5-grain quinine sulfate capsules containing 325 milligrams or 0.325 grams of quinine sulfate per capsule. Once the source of active ingredient has been identified, you must then determine the amount of active ingredient that is contained in the contents of two of the source capsules. This comes directly from the product labeling. In this example, the contents of two 5-grain quinine sulfate capsules obviously contain 650 milligrams or 0.65 grams of quinine sulfate. Next, we must determine the total weight of the contents of two of the 5-grain quinine sulfate capsules. Remember, you are concerned with the weight of the contents of the capsules, not the weight of the contents and the capsule shell. In this example, we determine that the weight of the contents of two 5-grain quinine sulfate capsules that we are using as our source to be 916 milligrams or 0.916 grams. Next, we use the following formula to calculate the amount of capsule powder that will provide the uh, amount of active ingredient needed to prepare the compound. In this example, we've determined that the weight of active ingredient in two of our commercial capsules to be 650 milligrams or 0.65 grams. Likewise, We've determined that the total weight of the contents of two of our source capsules to be 916 milligrams or 0.916 grams. And finally, we also determined that the amount of active ingredient needed for our compound to be 3.15 grams. Inserting these numbers into the formula and solving for x tells us that 4.439 grams of capsule powder derived from the contents of the commercially prepared 5-grain quinine sulfate capsules will provide the 3.15 grams of quinine sulfate needed to compound the prescription. At this point, we now know that we need to obtain 
4.439 grams of capsule powder from our source capsules. The next question is, how many of the 5 grain quinine sulfate capsules do we need to empty to provide that amount? To determine the minimum number of capsules needed, you can simply divide the amount of active ingredient that you need by the amount of active ingredient within each capsule. In this example, the amount of active ingredient needed is 3.15 grams. And the amount of active ingredient in each of our source capsules is 5 grains, which is equivalent to 325 milligrams, or 0.325 grams. By dividing 3.15 grams by 0.325 grams per capsule, you can determine that you will need to empty the contents of at least 10 capsules in order to obtain 4.439 grams of capsule powder. At this point, we will take at least 10 capsules and empty the contents into a mortar as illustrated in this sequence of images. Next, we will gently blend the capsule powder in the mortar to ensure a uniform mixture. Next, we simply weigh 4.439 grams of the capsule powder, as illustrated here. Finally, what we have is 4.439 grams of capsule powder containing 3.15 grams of quinine sulfate and 1.289 grams of excipients that will now be used to compound the prescription.